there has been much contention as to why anyone would use the word apple when referring to this Genesis passage, when clearly the word apple is not used. As correct as this may be, the approach to questioning information and material need not include so much enmity. Many insults have been hurled, but these do nothing to unveil the mystery. Humiliation is a commonly used maneuver to keep the truth veiled, and only a mass shift in the perception of this tactic can prevent its effectiveness. Calling someone insane or stupid and chuckling at something as if it's just known to be erroneous are not proofs of anything. Ignorance, no matter how clever, does not slay the inner dragon. It simply continues a never-ending sword battle with shadows. Insults, cleverness, and humiliation are fun and each of us has the choice to treat life and each other as a joke and a game, or to take it serious, yet paradoxically, not to take one's self seriously. The clever mind wants it both ways. It enjoys the cognitive dissonance that somehow war actually does create peace, or that restriction is somehow liberating. Should one treat such profound information as has been presented like a joke, then what of life? The paradox to take home is that when one wants it all, one ends up with nothing. Yet, when one wants nothing, they can then attain it all. Freedom. Some of the reasons why Apple has been used will be given in this work, but first there are going to be more revelations, and the context of the mystery is going to come into focus more clearly as we move along. This is a duality, with the word dual being right there in the forefront, which is the homophone of dual, meaning conflict. It is perceived that we can be serious sometimes, but we can also have fun. Okay, then sometimes there can be war, while sometimes there can be peace. But the issue is that both occur in this reality at the same time, albeit in separate locations. Peace is also an interesting word because it connotes division again, seeing that its homophone in English is peace, to be a separate part of the whole. Why is something complete said to be whole when its homophone is whole, something that is dug out of the ground? Why does this word relate in the etymology to the word hell, which means to conceal, since that is exactly what a hole is usually meant to do after it is dug, to bury and conceal something within it?
The word Salah has created a great deal of confusion amongst biblical scholars, especially in regards to the book of Psalms. Just to be certain, the reverse spelling of Salah is Hales, which means to restore to vigorous health, to make whole. It seems pretty clear from the Old High German Hala that the Halls of Valhalla, which is the heaven of Norse mythology, is actually referring to the Halls of Hell, where the dead heroes are welcomed, seeing also that a well is simply a deep hole. The Old High German Hala and suffix seen in Valhalla gives us another angle to look at when it is spelled backwards. Hala becomes Allah which is the Arabic term for God. Cell means salt in Latin and is the homophone to the English cell, which is a prison, yet also a small device that delivers electric current as a result of a chemical reaction. This reaction involves water and salt, with the salt specifically creating the connection or ground that allows the transfer of this electrical energy. The bodily cells are governed by this transfer. The earth, ether, is the ground for the electrical buildup which is then discharged from the chemical reaction of oceanic salt water. Are the cells of the body not concealed? They are certainly not out in the open. And if hell is related to the word conceal, does this mean that our cells are in hell? Why do the last three letters of cell and hell indicate to us the Hebrew word for God? Are the dead buried and concealed in God, which is truly the sun, and why certain corporations slap this information in everyone's faces, as for example sun-kissed, because kissed is simply a Dutch word that means coffin, case, chest. To be sun-kissed is the kiss of death. So the sun is the coffin for the dead who are concealed in their cells, waiting to be risen by way of L electrical charges in their cell salt water tomb. To conceal something is also to put it into a cache which is where the homophone of cash comes into play. In commerce, everyone buys and sells. That's how it is found out if a man is worth his salt. We must be seen as money with all of its various charges that take place, which is the mortgage or pledge to the dead to be recharged in the penalty box, which is obviously the square urn of sat urn
This provides a new home for those who are being re-leased into life, since a lease is a temporary let or form of rent, whereby to rent something is to divide it. In exchange for a home, body, the soul pledges itself to die. The soul takes out a mortgage and then the home is sold. The sun is where all of the soul transactions are sold or sold since sol is the sun. Technically it is the left son of G as shown in the Turkish sol meaning left and also G as related to the musical solfege with sol being the G note as indicated in the Freemasonic symbol of G which is both circled and squared as shown in Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man which indicates man in virtual reality. To be in vitro is to be contained in an artificial environment outside of the living organism. It is the occult symbol of the house of infinite mirrors. Everything that is left is seen as weak and worthless which is from the old English left for the same indication. This has nothing to do with the left hand being weaker in most individuals but it has to do with the dead which are obviously seen as weak and worthless. Is this pessimistic? Ask anyone if they enjoy anything that is dead and there is the answer. Homes or bodies are being created and mortgaged by the sun and moon as shown in the Freemasonic symbolism which is shown publicly for everyone to see and figure out. Mass is from the Sanskrit meaning moon, month, flesh, meat and the last two letters of on gives us the Egyptian word for sun. Hence Mason Mass on is the sun and moon and is also why the church holds Mass on Sunday with the vampire ritual of drinking the blood and eating the flesh of the Christ or the double crossed because the church represents the double X chromosomes and beginning of time Kronos. The double X chromosomes which double cross each individual as their soul is mortgaged and put into a maison whereby maison is simply French for house, home. From the sun to the moon and back again. Mass on mason, on mass, on mass. All tog ether. This links us with the marriage rings of Saturn whereby in a marriage maritime ceremony a contract is signed and there is an official pronouncement to the public pubic. This is because more often than not children will be produced from this union which creates new mortgages from the husband and wife.
The pudendal cleft in particular is also aptly titled the cleft of Venus, with Venus being said to orbit the Earth in the shape of a pentagram, bringing us to a connection with the apple of sin. When an apple is cut widthwise, the seeds in the middle form a perfectly symmetrical five-pointed star, which is otherwise known as a pentagram, and when inverted, becomes the symbol of Baphomet. This further relates back to the Vitruvian Man, seeing that da Vinci's portrait portrays a man as a five-pointed star, with head, arms, and legs stretched out to form this shape. The five seeds represent the five elements. Added to this, when an apple is sliced vertically, the core portrays the shape of the female vulva, which contains the seeds of life within it, furthering the sexual symbolism. Here is wisdom. That which is free cannot also be that which is governed. One is free, or one is not free. Life in the galaxy is a blast that circles itself in an endless succession of rebirths, or it is something that a reflective and meditative mind can comprehend and move out of. That's the ultimate symbol of the casino, because the only way out is all in. The only way out is pure neutrality, which is simply another word for meditation. One has internalized the paradox and has become the finale and the introduction. The weight has been lifted, which is the ending of time and is the reason there are no outside saviors. If one is waiting for something outside of themselves, then they are truly going to remain in the time trap that circles itself endlessly. Kronos time eats its own children, and we are being eaten by time, which has created the euphemism of aging. Just like food, as soon as the plate is empty, there is no more energy to be consumed, and then one is out of time. Time, despite the common human perception, runs both forwards and backwards, which is the living of the right and the dying of the left that creates the apple of sin sign. That's the sign wave of time, which emits our energy with time being emit spelled in reverse, with wave being linked to the law of the sea in commerce when one signs a waiver, while to wave is to lose a right through an error, offense, or crime. The waiver is the formal statement of this relinquishment, and even to wave is a sign of saying goodbye as one waves their arms in the air, with the irony being that the body is comprised mostly of water, and thus would actually be creating a wave of sorts.
Pomme is the French word for apple, giving us our immediate connection. Yet is also related to the word palm, which is where in many symbolic depictions, the nails of crucifixion are hammered through. The dates on our fingers represent a point in time, which is what date means, which pins us to a specific date of birth in the tree of death time. To take a bite from the apple of time is to become cross-eyed. Here is the mist taken away from the mystery of Genesis 3.2.2. The last dash at the end of this passage, as described in works before, is called an apostiopasis, which is a sentence that is deliberately cut off because the speaker is unwilling to finish it, most likely because the intention of what they are about to do to man is too terrible to be said aloud. Using basic inversion, if the concern was that man had become as one of the gods and could then proceed to take from the tree, three, trinity, eternity of life, the intention at this point was to put man into a position to instead take from the tree of death, time. And so that is what has happened. We are eating, breathing, and taking in the ether of death and time, as shown directly to us in the moon. The moon is the sin, sign, sign of time that is eaten throughout the month, whereby it is also rejuvenated from that same nourishment, waxing and waning. This is the apple that doesn't fall far from the tree of Saturn with its tree rings, as shown in the esoteric symbol of the Yggdrasil. We become nailed or fixed to the apple, pum, palm tree, with tree being the homonym of three with three being the anagram of ether, which is the re-manifestation of Genesis by way of the cross. The father, ether, to the son, son, which contains the holy spirits. Father, son, holy ghost. The false light of Lucifer, the light bearer, but not the light itself, is the moon which tempts man into the garden of delights through the female anatomy which is the symbol of eve the evening offering the fruit of knowledge to the morning morning sun sun to know has always biblically meant to sexually consummate The apple of sin has charged us with a crime or debt, death of sin, sign, which is to die in time. How can this be denied? It is seen in this world every single day. An appeal is a legal proceeding where a case is brought before a higher court to review the decision of a lower court. It is a criminal accusation. The criminal must be called or summoned or summoned. The only way to be called or summoned is to be designated with an appellation, 
which is a name used to separate oneself from others. That's the method of being an individual, individual, which believes that it is separate from everything else. It is the message of Hermes, which just means Hermes, the children of Isis, who are all about me and mine. The moon connection is shown in the suffix of mes, which is the Spanish noun for month. Month is moon. Thus, Hermes, her moon or month, collects the me's or individuals who believe in a nation of signs or a designation designation. The moon is the master key or dawn key that is depicted in the allegory of Jesus riding in on a donkey in the triumphal entry. The daughter of Sion is the guard of heaven, with the daughter being rearranged into the guard, which means the moon satellite guardian. Sion is simply a word meaning heaven, the heavens. The dawn key is the master key, with dawn being the Spanish word for master, and master simply means moon star, with mass being moon and ster being Dutch for star. The master key collects all of those who would wear the crown of thorns of desire and who want to be asses by trying to have it all, or who believe that their own personal actions are a necessary recommendation for salvation. Thus the reason that even to this day, when someone pulls down their pants and shows their ass to someone, they are said to have mooned them. To turn one's heart into a machine of desire is to be canned and thus mooned. Then one is crowned with the horns or thorns of time, which is Kronos. This is how the game of commerce receives its funds, which is from the moon or money pit. The Pope represents the Holy See, which is the crown that sets before the communion table the sacrifices of the altar. The latter word coma gives indication to the symbol of the Rosicrucian crucifixion. It is the crucifixion of a bastardized birthing process, which is another portion of the allegory of Jesus riding in on a mule ass. The trestle board becomes the matrix, or what people are now calling the flat earth. Which is truly just ether in the emulation, emulation, or simulation that is a counterfeit and forgery.
The pommel cross contains four balls or knobs at the end of each section, which we all die on and keeps us in the commercial banks of time, as shown in the synonym of pommel, which is bank. If pommel seems to resemble pommel, that's because they are related and are simply different iterations of each other. To pommel, pommel is to strike something, usually with a fist, as also related to a biff, hence the allegory of chai ram a biff. The symbolism of a boxing match should be in plain sight now as one gets into the ring to get pommel, pommel during each round. It is simply another allusion towards Saturn with the rings that circle the square. We all get into the ring, square, and beat each other up in this symphony, phony simulation, which is also seen in the musical term beats, as related to the circle of fifths. Enough beats, and one gets really down into the groove. A championship boxing match is 12 rounds, and music is governed by 12 notes, because 12 is the number of government and is the end of the line. 12 months of the year, 12 ages, 12 hues on the color wheel, 12 followers of Jesus and many other solar heroes, and so on. The latter especially being indicative of the solar hero being the eye or sun that was taken out or biffed. It is the pommel horse that the body spins around on, which creates the race of time for the human race. The truth will not be shown to anyone outside, because one needs to remember, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. And thus, man has been sentenced to the prison of the infinite time loop, to be forever eaten away because the gods, or Lord God, saw that we were crossbred by the transmutation of Lucifer, and an abomination built upon a foundation of chaos without restrictions. Musically, this is known as sussing, or to create a sus chord away from the natural key. This is another reason that the last three letters of Jesus, Jesus indicate a meaning in Latin of swine, pig. It has been quite clever to make this figure as the savior. The symbolism is prevalent in everything that is contained in this reality, and for this example in particular, we can make the connections by getting a drink at the bar, which is the Hebrew word for sun. At the bar is the bar tender, which is the sun that tenders or pours the spirits, seeing that another word for alcohol is spirits.
Just to be clear, it is a comedy, seeing that sarcasm comes from the Greek sarkasmos and sarx, meaning flesh. Each of us is mocked by being clothed in flesh. It is to be in the flesh of a body, which is to be a dead corpse, just like the French corps states, meaning body. The pronunciation is attentive towards the Latin cor, meaning heart. The ultimate trick of the deceiver, which is the satire of the satyr, satire. This reality is a farce for this reason too, because a farce is a comedy, but also a dish of mixed ingredients. Of course, Saturn is related to the goat god Pan, and thus to Saturn, which is the ring past knot of the wedding ceremony that produces the rebirth onto the trestle board of this sarcastic comedy in the flesh through the matrix womb, which is hysterical, because hysterical is derived from the Greek hysterikos, meaning womb. The womb that births us in sin, the sine wave of time to be punished in the endless loop. But it's just for fun, because this divine comedy is punny. We die, but then we're back in a flesh. That's because it's ironic, which is the irony of the loop, seeing that a synonym for irony in the etymology is ferris. Ferris is obviously the ferris wheel of the circular circus that goes round and round. We are not in the ether which is the earth to be honored or dignified. This is a place that we have been sent to be shamed, debased, mortified and humiliated. Humans in the humus who develop a sense of humor through humiliation. Everything in commerce is designed to ensure the success of this ill regard towards one another and a solidified achievement of humiliation with the word employment clearly containing the term ploy, which is a tactic used to embarrass or frustrate an opponent. And since this is in the flesh, it truly is an embarrassment that everyone enjoys treating each other with such disdain. Because there is nothing more dark and ritualistically black magic occult than the belief in and use of money.
Hence, the love of money is the love of being spiraled or turned in a circle, and everyone here lives in a world, and money is said to make the world go round. That's the single eye, mon eye, money, where everyone passes the buck, and what goes around comes around. There is not a single Christian in this world, no matter how much anyone wants to believe they are saved by a Jesus Christ, which simply means double-crossed swine. To believe in or even use money, single eye, is to be an antichrist. That goes for everyone, including everyone in the truth movement. If there is not a real, discernible and tremendous effort towards living with each other and our environment without the use of money, single eye, we can all call ourselves Satanist Luciferians. If this seems like a fool's errand, that's because it is. The moment such a thing is proposed to anyone is when the greatest laughter begins. The highest principle of Kabbalah is desire, and that especially includes the principles behind and use of money. The money, mon eye, single eye of the moon falls into the cube of Allah, Saturn, contained in the rings of time that create the years which brings those who have been mooned and ride in on the ass of the great year. Truly, think for a moment. Can you deviate from the path that your fellow men have lined up for you? Each of us became the double cross swine through the double crossing ceremony of the church, which is where the cast of the TV series Lost was heading back to in the final scene of that show. The term church also goes back to Circe and Kirk, as many already know since this has been mentioned by Jordan Maxwell. And most importantly so, because Circe is said mythologically to have turned Odysseus's men into swine. Jesus Christ equals double cross swine. Interestingly enough, in the story of the Odyssey, Odysseus is given a herb by Hermes to resist the power of Circe. The etymology also shows that Circe means falcon, which is related to the symbol of Horus as the falcon headed god. Thank you.
The trickster, trickstar, must be kidding, right? Especially because a kid is also a goat, as related to this satire, satyr. It's just goading us on, which is to drive something, like cattle, into action. This is when we are clothed in ether, since the anagram of goat is toga, which means to clothe, which keeps us tog ether together, or clothed in ether. The gut is the womb of the hysteria, and where our waist holds all of our waste. Waste equals waste, of course. The stocks and bonds of all us humus humans being together, where we talk in circles. Everyone is eating each other, which is the meaning of the story of Cain and Abel, because Cain and Abel together is Cainable, cannibal, the snake biting its own tail. To bide the apple cross of time is to be fundamentally transformed. This is where we are waiting it out, albeit eternally. How is this? To bide is synonymous with perdure, which means to last, and is next of kin to perdue, a soldier that is assigned to a dangerous task, or what is even considered to be a hopeless cause. Why is it a sentinel? Because these are the watchers or guards of God who are sent in L, and even angels of God can be caught in the influence of the influenza, which makes Purdue a perdition. The Christian message has been to repent, which is exactly what this comedy enjoys, because to pent is to be confined in a prison. To repent is to be imprisoned again, while pent or penta is from the Greek meaning five that is associated with the symbol of Baphomet and the pentagram. To repent is to stay imprisoned in the ward, word of God. Baphomet, Pan, Dionysus, Jesus Christ. This is also the reason that things are said to be lukewarm, since the Indo-European root of luke means light, and when we die, the light feels warm and inviting, which is really just another womb, tomb summoning call. From another perspective, it can be shown that this is how we are able to look, look at things, because without light, one cannot see. And this involves time, which allows us to see both forwards and backwards in our minds, and thus differentiate between what is called both good and evil. 
This gives one enlightenment from the fire of Prometheus, with phi or phi being the 21st letter of the Greek alphabet and is the golden number of Eo, Isis. The Greek phi retains the symbol of Eo, which is Isis, and its numerical value is 500, which is the value of the phoenix. The two phonetics of this word put together give us phi nix, with nick being a synonym for devil, Satan. The phoenix sun rises from the ashes of the dead, given birth by Eo, Isis, which is the blackjack hand of the casino. The Luciferian star of Isis, Osiris, is thus reborn. This is also the reason everyone is saying like so much now, and he was like, and then I was like, and is the purpose for liking things in social media, because to like is to luke, which is to put a light on something. The more likes, the more light, especially in regards to frivolous and unimportant entertainments which directs the attention of the many in one area, light, while keeping important issues in the dark. Is the truly important information going to have a light shined on it? Or is there just going to be so much continuation in the dark comedy of this script tour? Remember, to be awake is to be at a funeral, wake, and to be aware is to be a commodity that is for sale. Awake and aware, a dead commodity that is for sale, that will be sold. This divine comedy wants everyone to keep the fun in funeral. To create a revolution is just that, the completion of one turn. The beginning is the ending and one has gone nowhere. This is the reason that revolutions are an integral and important process of this system. Yet, this still eludes the mindset that believes revolution actually makes accomplishments towards freedom. It does nothing of the kind. What is important to discern is that for a revolution to complete itself, there must by necessity be revelation. Revelation is thus constituent towards revolution. Hindsight is 2020, which is to be double crossed twice over, and is to see things from the back or rear. To rear something is to raise it, as shown in the slight rearrangement of the word revelation as elevation, without the first letter R being included. Furthermore, a hind is a female red deer as linked with the occult symbol of the heart and the old English words as shown for members of a household. Everyone here is declared a citizen and a member of this household of the earth heart. It all started with a debt, death, that could not be taken back as shown throughout the symbol of the Yggdrasil or ash tree. The ash tree is the tree of death ashes to ashes, dust to dust. This was the fire of Prometheus, or light of Lucifer given to mankind, as shown in the English language as the vow to the Els, or vow Els. Seeing that the letters A and E together is a grapheme called ash, which is linked to the old English Latin alphabet as shown meaning ash tree. A and E is Ea, otherwise known as Enki, or Prometheus, Lucifer, forming the first two vowels. The debt, death of knowledge, is built into this vow, which is a pledge, or death pledge, to the Els, or deities who have created the I-O-U. The vow Els are thus A-E-I-O-U, and those who question things will on certain occasions ask why. The Els are the half-gods, or demigods, seeing that L is the Roman numeral for 50, which is half of a full 100% completion. 
These are the builders of humanity. Even a carpenter square is simply an L. The L, Ls, are the creators of the square, mortar board, trestle board, with the two pillars of the sun, fire, and moon, ice, that create the temper, templar changes of this reality. The sun is the positive polarity of spring and summer, while the moon is the negative polarity of autumn and winter. It is the pillar of the moon of Isis which ices the frozen assets until the citizen is given liberty to hold their birth of office off ice once again. It is strange that the thought has not occurred more frequently that since the sun is the source of heat, the moon must by default in a duality be the source of cold. The two pillars are the two pills, pill Rs of the matrix red for heat and blue for cold, which create light and darkness, which are the two veils. The two veils produce the true plan ET, which is both a globe and a flat plane, as shown in the ultimate symbol of Freemasonry, the G with the square and compass. The compass creates the circle, church of the dome, or the Edom, Edom, as linked to the Hebrew word meaning red. To feel blue is to be downcast or gloomy, and is linked with the Scottish English word for blue as shown and the Middle English and Old English words shown. The latter word is tied in with terms for bleed, giving connection to the term blue blood. Blue is also a synonym for profane, which is a term used in Freemasonry to symbolize the defamation and rejection of God. The paradox is therefore complete, since one is living on both a flat surface, feeling blue, flat, matte, while surrounded by a circular one. The G that is squared and circled has always represented Saul, which is the dead left sun that one may call Saturn, the true light of man. This was never hidden and has been shown in previous works here several times. The musical solfege at its root starts in the key of C, and the fifth note of this scale is G, which is the Sol note, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, or C, D, E, F, G. The fifth note links us to the five-pointed star of Baphomet, the goat god of Saturn, which is further symbolized in the Vitruvian Man, or Man in the Glass, as shown earlier in this work. We are surrounded by a dome of glass, which is where the spirits are poured into from the bar sun, just like the bar tender pours spirits into various glasses. Sometimes glasses are also required to see things more clearly, or perhaps they blur things when not needed, such as when one has consumed too many glasses of spirits. Things become hazy and blurry distorted and unclear. Then one is out of tune or off key, which is what it means to be flat, to be lifeless, unmusical, and essentially disconnected from everything else. This is the reason that the Italian word piano means plan, flat, level, plain. A piano, of course, has black and white keys, giving us the formation of duality, which is both circled and squared flat and round, as linked with the symbol of the black and white checkered board floor. When one is off key, they are kicked out of the band. To be kicked out of the band is to be tossed into the glass, which is the church of Circe, the never-ending circle. This means that one has been put into the doghouse, which is to be the reverse of God. This is severely linked with the aspect of sex, which is to be a dog as opposed to a god. To be a dog is to chase tail and sniff ass, which is why the star of David wags the dog and V chases after it. Sex is the mark of the beast that keeps the fires of the torch being brought forward in the human race as everyone is having relationships while being electrical relays on ships.
That's the track that the human race has found itself in, fixated on the training wheel, which is what it truly means to have a flat earth mentality. As was stated in the work called The Ether, there is no earth, only ether, which is of the heart. Yet, in what is called the physical realm, everyone is chasing the dog as they exist around the eye of Saturn. There is no earth, so how can there be a flat earth? You are circling Saturn, exactly as shown in the symbol of Mecca, exactly as shown in the ultimate symbol of Freemasonry. It is the authentic basis for the turning of the ages, which are the disciples of the sun, the quintessential Prometheus that has been chained to a stone or rooted into the tree of desire. The phoenix, which is rising from its ashes, which is the symbol of 9-11, which was the emergency call made to consummate the end of the great year turning, which is to add another tree ring, to circle the square, the rings and the cube, a vow of eternity which creates the solution. The cycle has to stop somewhere, but there are no external saviors, none. One needs to stop the cycle within themselves, which are actions rooted in desire, the chasing of one's own tales, the never-ending story that is easy to get caught in because it seems so real. Sex itself is the crux of this endless chase, and if this desire cannot be surpassed, then one will remain in the time trap because God cannot be a dog. Live like a dog, die like a dog. To be free of the matrix, one must be pathless, which is to be neutral. It is to be in the center, centaur, which is seen a hundred percent, or both sides of the equation, at once. To struggle with polarities is to be like the demigods or elves who are 50-50, only ever seen one side of the situation. To be happy is to forget sadness. To remember sadness is to forget happiness. One does not see both sides of the coin at the same exact moment without conflict. The ending of duality, and thus the exit from the matrix glass prison, is to find the last threshold, which is to be whole. It is to find one centaur. To find 100 completeness, is to step through the 101st gateway, which is the pathless between the two pillars, and through the ring. There are 101 arteries of the heart. One of them penetrates the crown of the head. Moving upwards by it, a man reaches the immortal. The others serve for departing in different directions. Yeah, in different directions. The 101st artery of the heart opens the pathless door of Brahma, which is where the adept may enter, while the souls of every other ordinary man and woman depart in the other 100 directions, back into the matrix, Plato's cave. The symbol of 101 was shown in the matrix movie, pulling the direction of its meaning towards the necessity of choice, which keeps one locked into polarities. If the individual can see that they exist as both animal and man, there is then the possibility that the two sides can be merged, and one can then bury the dog and become the god they were meant to be. Otherwise, one is caught in the very conundrum of choice, which is to pick up a coin and believe that there is only one side in your hand. Both sides of any choice are carried, regardless of the amount of denial that any might have towards this. Choice keeps one turning in the great wheel, running with the human race around Saturn. The great question is, does anyone truly want to know the reason why?